So the next two days we are taking our last sets of notes for the nine weeks, if you can believe it. We are on our last unit, and hopefully we'll be done by Thanksgiving and we'll be able to come back from our break ready to review everything from the whole year so far because our nine weeks test um, in December is going to cover everything since August. So I just want to go ahead and give you a fair warning now that we're going to have to just review a lot of information, so it might be a good idea to start locating your old notes, and that way you'll be ready for all this in-class review that we'll be doing. So we have one last classification of matter to talk about. We've talked about states of matter. We've talked about um, the elements and compounds and mixtures, so just the way that the atoms arrange themselves. And finally, we're going to talk about how atoms react and uh, this can determine whether they would be considered an acid or a base or something neutral called a salt. So the salt that we eat on our food is not the only type of salt there is, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Today we're focusing on just acids and bases, so we'll just get some um, very brief characteristics of both, and then we'll talk about a few examples of how you might see it in everyday life. So acids produce hydrogen ions when mixed with water. So if I pour an acid into water, it would actually break apart into the smaller pieces that make up the compound, and part of the thing that would break off would be hydrogen ions. So if you were to taste food and it has a sour taste, the reason it has a sour taste is because there's an acid involved somehow. Acids also re react with metals and with carbonates, so any type of compound that involves the polyatomic ion called carbonate, which was CO3, um, acids react with those very readily, so they quickly will interact with them. So that that um, characteristic is called corrosive, so if you ever have had like battery acid fall on a part of the car, if you've ever noticed that before, it will kind of like quickly eat through the metal or eat through the paint, strip through the paint, it's called corrosive. Also, if we were to take a, a test uh, with paper called litmus paper, if I have this blue litmus paper and I dip it into an acid, it would turn it red. So our key color for acids are red, and we'll have to remember that for later when we do a lab with this. So we have some formulas that we need to remember, and we've got them all listed here, and there are some tricks to help remember most of the names for these guys. So first of all, you should notice that acids typically start with an H in some form. You might have more than one H's, but in general, if it starts with an H, this is the part that would break off in the water and leave the rest of it, the polyatomic ion, in the water as well. So when you're looking at these combinations here, these compounds, whatever is after the H is how we name the acid. So for in this case, hydrochloric acid. Hydro comes from hydrogen. Chloric comes from the chlorine right after it. Now the rest of these have polyatomic ions, and so we drop the hydro part and we name the acid after this polyatomic ion. So this is nitrate. We learned this before with ionic bonds. So this is where we're getting nitric from. Here we have sulfate. So this is where we're getting sulfuric acid. And we've got carbonate which is where we get carbonic acid from. Um, this is not a polyatomic ion that we've talked about, but this is called acetic acid, and this is what we usually see with vinegar. And then phosphoric acid comes from phosphate. So I know it looks like just complete gibberish to you because these are big chemical formulas and these kind of foreign-sounding names, so I just wanted to give you... Um, an overview of what each of them is most commonly used for, and that might be, give you a better understanding of how common they are. So HCl hydrochloric acid, I think we've talked about before how it makes up most of the stomach digestive fluid, so this is what helps digest your food as it goes through the stomach. Nitric acid is involved in the production of fertilizers, and it reacts really quickly with ammonia, which is also something in fertilizer we'll talk about in a few minutes. Sulfuric acid is also used in fertilizers, and it's a common ingredient in antifreeze. Um, carbonic acid is found in sodas, and it's also in your blood. And then we just said acetic acid is in vinegar, and phosphoric acid is um, helpful with rust removal. So it'll kind of strip rust from the iron. So other things that acids are 
frequently used in uh, many of the vitamins and foods, which is why a lot of foods have a sour taste. Stomach for digestion, which was hydrochloric acid. They're also in brick and metal cleaners, car batteries, and fertilizers. So on the other side of the spectrum, we have bases. And bases, when mixed with water, um, they would break apart and produce hydroxide ions in the water. If you were to taste um, a material that has base in it, it would taste bitter. So if any of you have ever, ever said something inappropriate to your parents and you've been told to wash your mouth out with soap, that soap tasted bitter. Um, so hopefully none of you have had that issue. And um, honestly, I never have either, believe it or not. But um, there are other things that taste bitter too, and we can talk about that in class. Bases also feel slippery. So um, sometimes they might be strong enough to burn your skin, and I can show you some pictures in class of what that looks like. Um, the same thing also goes for really strong acids. So strength for either one of them, if it's really strong, it'd really be hurt, harmful to your skin, which is why in class we're typically not going to deal with things that are that extreme. We'll also conduct a test in class when we do a lab where we have litmus paper that is colored red. It actually looks a little pink. And when we dip it into a base solution, it actually would turn the litmus paper to a blue color. So bases taste bitter, and they turn litmus paper blue. So just put all those B's together, and uh, that'll be a good way to help remember those characteristics. Stick with bases. So again, we've got some formulas to look at, and hopefully you notice this time, majority of these formulas end in OH, which explains why this part would actually break off once it's put in water and we leave the beginning part by itself. So sodium hydroxide, remember hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. So when we name this compound, we're just going to name the first name and then the last name is actually going to stay as it is. We learned this in our ionic bonds notes, so you might want to look back at those if you were um, unsure about that. Sodium hydroxide is used most often in drain cleaners. If you've ever heard of the brand Drano, that's the most common time you're going to see it. It's also in paint remover. Potassium hydroxide is used in the same things as sodium hydroxide, except um, it's a lot more expensive, so you're not going to see it as often. Calcium hydroxide is an ingredient in mouthwash, and it's also in plaster or uh, cement type of material. Um, magnesium oxide, hydroxide is in the milk of magnesia. If you've ever had to drink like um, the liquid version of Tums or like Pepto-Bismol, uh, those, those types of really thick, chalky drinks to try to settle your stomach if, you're, if it's upset, that's called an antacid. It's anti-acid. It kind of breaks down the acids, neutralizes everything, makes you feel better. Aluminum hydroxide is also used in antacid medicines. Then we get to ammonia, and we've seen ammonia as a polyatomic ion before. Um, at that time, it actually had an extra hydrogen, so it had a charge to it. And ammonia is used um, most often in fertilizer to have a um, chemical reaction with the nitric acid. You're also going to see a lot in household cleaner. It leaves a streak-free shine, so a lot of times you'll see it in glass cleaner like Windex. Finally, calcium hydroxide, or sorry, calcium oxide is a key in ingredient in making cement as well. So most often you will see bases used in baking soda, in cleaners like ammonia spray and drain cleaner, and acids like medicines to help settle your stomach. Making mortar and cement, um, and mortar is very similar to cement, it kind of holds bricks together. And then finally, soil to help make it less acidic. And so this picture just kind of shows you what happens when we put acids in water and bases in water. We end up with the ions breaking off from the rest of the compound, and we'll see the hydrogen ions floating around with the acid and hydroxide ions floating around with the base. So tomorrow we're going to finish up these notes um, and learn what happens when we put acids and bases together. And we'll also learn what we can do to test different solutions and find out whether they're an acid or a base. So stick around. Uh, make sure you have these completed for class. And that way we can review this information. Just one more set of notes after this and we're all done for the semester. So keep it up. Have a good one.